Well, I was born in Smithfield, as Brian says. My grandfather uh, was William Pilkington, the father of my father. And he was a, a, a really devout Mormon. Good musician, led the choir and all that stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> he would come to our house very often to visit Dad. My father was invalided. And every time he came, then we knew that we would be treated to a story. And he was telling the story of Martin Harris. Okay, this is the way it began. He said, I came from Bolton, Lancashire, England. Oh, I can't remember the year. With my family, and we settled in Smithfield. And he said, one day, Martin Harris Jr. came by and asked if I, at age 14, could go over to Clarkston and live with them on their farm and be a farmhand for a year. Hold on. Let me interrupt you. So you asked about the date. You said you couldn't remember the date. Yeah. And this is why part of why we brought up the dates before. He was born, was it November 13th, 1860? Mm-hmm. Not that I just know that. It's in this it's some stories, you know, that she had given me. Brian memorized it. He's good memory. 18, 1860. So that the year the Civil War begins, her grandfather is born in England. Okay, so then if he were 14, this would be 1874 now. They immigrate. Uh-huh. And he was 14 years old. To Smithfield. When this happened. Yep. So Martin Harris Jr. needed this farm help. So he secured Grandpa and said, I will give you board and room and a heifer. Whatever a heifer is. So his folks said, okay, you can go. So Grandpa climbed in the back of this buckboard type thing wooden wagon and they took off for Clarkson. It was late at night and so to travel from Smithfield to Clarkson, I don't know how many miles, but they didn't get there until very, very late. So he, Grandpa was ushered into the, the house, a very uh, common little house, and said, Martin Harris Jr. said to him, here's a blanket, just sleep there on the floor. There's a bowl of bread and milk here. Eat that. I will find you better quarters in the morning. So he left him. Grandpa said he was eating the bread and milk, and he noticed in the far corner of the room that there was a figure lying on a cot. And then the figure moved, and Grandpa became, you know, a little nervous. And in a few minutes, the figure called out, and asked this boy to come to him, come over. So Grandpa did. And the man looked at him and he said, Are you going to come and work on the farm? Well, yes, I am. Well, uh, are you, uh, how old are you? Grandpa said, I'm 14. Well, um, are you a Mormon? Yes, I am. Have you read the Book of Mormon? Well, yes, I do read the Book of Mormon. And the man said, well, what's on the first page of the Book of Mormon? Or the frontispiece? And Grandpa said, well, the testimony of the three witnesses. And who were the three witnesses? Well, David Whitmer, uh, David uh, Oliver Calvary, and Martin Harris. And he said, well, I am Martin Harris. Now, if you will come to me after your chores are done, we will have a conversation and talk about things. Well, Grandpa was just, okay. So, he did. Ever after that, they found him better quarters in one thing or another. But after that, when Grandpa would be finished with his chores for the day, he would come in and sit by Martin Harris, and they would discuss the Book of Mormon. So that's the way he was basically, you know, taught so the Book spent, of Mormon. He spent the winter. Yeah, basically. he spent the whole winter long. But 
always after their conversations, Martin Harris would bear his testimony as to the absolute truthfulness of Mormonism. And it's true that an angel did come. We were in the grove with Joseph, and an angel did come down in, in this dazzling light, and he presented to us the book of the pages of the Book of Mormon. He's, we didn't, he doesn't mention touching them, but he said, I did see it. And he turned the pages, and I did see the engravings. And he showed us the Urim and Thummim and the sort of Laban. He testified, this is the absolute truth. I will never deny it. He said, and then the angel gathered up and ascended into heaven again. And at the end of this experience, Martin Harris said, uh, it is enough, it is enough. Uh, 